In the beginning of my career, I used to shoot with a flash on top of my camera, and that's how I started. I think we all start that way. But now, I've learned how to master light, and um, it's never the same. making a white background is having the perfect amount of light. It's not blasting out the background and me think it is, but it's not. If my front reading is 11, my background is going to be three quarters to a stop over. No more than that. So if I'm getting F11 here, in the background I'm going to get 11.7, 11.8, 11.9 in that family. That's all I need to keep a great background. Now, when it's shot the wrong way, and I'm going a stop and a half, two stops over, you get a blown out look and it's milky. It's not crisp. Same thing with this, just make your eyes talk for you here. The eyes, the expressions gotta be alive and fresh. There we are, it's beautiful. For this shot, we're doing a beauty situation. We have three lights on set. Normally, my beauty dish is my main light, not in this situation. The beauty dish is a fill. My main light is our snoot. The snoot's reading F11. My fill light is 5.6. And I have a light behind my great model here that's also reading almost 5.6. It's reading four and three quarters. When you are in studio and you have multiple lights on the set, they're never all the same. I need to find out what my ratio is reading from one light to the other. First thing I want to do is find out my, my main light, my key light, meter for that, and then adjust the other lights accordingly. And it also depends on the idea I have for the shot today, the portrait shot, where it's very moody. The main light is the hero of the shot. So I want a certain look. I want that to overpower everything else and to create the mood. The other lights are helping complement the mood, but they're under. So my main lights give me F11 in the situation. My fill light, which was the beauty dish, is giving me five, six, two stops under. I can't guess at that. I need a meter to tell my main light and my fill light, and also my backlight coming to light the model's hair. All those variables together work to make a beautiful shot. The meter outside is, is, is extremely important. I'm reading the sunlight and then matching it with our strobe and adjusting the strobe to make sure it's the same thing. If the light's going down, we can meter it right away and find out what, how it changes. Now, how do I deal with the, the changing sunlight in a shot like today when you have the clouds coming in and out? Very often, I'm waiting for sun and I'm always looking to see where the sun is and where the clouds are and trying to judge it and get my shots when it's right on, full sun. But also I like those variables where I'm shooting it where it's just a little bit of sun coming in and out because those, those variations are quite nice sometimes. Once I have my meter reading and I'm set, I'll shoot throughout and I'll get those little small fluctuations in between the sun going in and out. But I know my, my main shots happen when the sun's out and my light's the same thing. When I'm doing a portrait or beauty, I'm reading all over the face to find out exactly where the light's falling. If I'm just using my meter in the camera, it tells me a meter reading for sure, but I have no idea where the light's falling. It can tell me it's reading F8 in the camera. And if I meet with my handheld meter, I can tell that it's reading F8 here, F8 here, and 562 over here. I want this to be F8 all the way around. I can get the light exactly the way I want it. Beautiful, right there, just like that. Very soft. Bring that shoulder up for me. 